In this video, we're going to talk about Joseph Smith's last prophetic dream called My Old Farm in Kirtland. Was Joseph Smith's last dream a prophecy for the LDS Church Interculture War in 2023? Questions. Does this barn symbolize the LDS Church of 2023? Please let me know in the comment field what you think if that's the case. Was this dream a prophecy predicting the culture clash within the LDS Church culminating in the 2020s? What did Joseph Smith mean when he said they will raise themselves in eminence above you? How would Joseph Smith be greeted if he returned to the LDS Church today? There is a prophesied return of Joseph Smith. I come again to lead you forth. Here is the last admonition of Joseph the prophet to the Nauvoo Legion before leaving for the Carthage jail where he was murdered. You will be called the first elders of the church, and your missions will be to the nations of the earth. You will gather many people into the vastnesses of the Rocky Mountains as a center for the gathering of the people, and you will be faithful because you have been true, and many of those that come under your ministry, because of their much learning, will seek for high positions. And they will raise themselves in eminence above you. But you will walk in low places unnoticed. And you will know all that transpires in their midst. And those that are my friends will be your friends. This I will promise you that when I come again to lead you forth. For I will go to prepare a place for you. So that where I am you shall be with me. In this address... Joseph Smith indicates that he's going away for a while, and he will be coming back. Does this mean that he's talking about leaving the life in a few days and then coming back in another time? Joseph Smith had the following dream the night before he was assassinated. I was back in Kirtland, Ohio, and thought I would take a walk out by myself and view my own farm by which I found grown up with weeds and brambles, and altogether bearing evidence of a neglect and want culture. I went into the barn, which I found without floor or doors, with the weather boarding off, and was altogether in keeping with the farm. While I viewed the desolation around me, and was contemplating how it might be recovered from the curse upon it, there came a rushing into the barn, a company of furious men who commenced to pick a quarrel with me. The leader of the party ordered me to leave the barn and farm, stating it was none of mine and that I must give up all hope of ever possessing it. I told him the farm was given me by the church, and although I had not any use of, of it for some time back, still I had not sold it and according to righteous principles, it belonged to me or the church. He then grew furious and began to rail upon me and threaten me and said it never did belong to me nor the church. I then told him I, that I did not think it was worth contending about, that I had no desire to live upon it in its present state, and if he thought he had a better right, I would not quarrel with him about it but leave. But my assurance that I would not trouble him at present did not seem to satisfy him, as he seemed determined to quarrel with me, and he threatened me with the destruction of my body. While he was thus engaged, pouring out his bitter words upon me, a rabble rushed in and nearly filled the barn, drew out their knives, and began to quarrel among themselves for the premises, and for a moment forgot me, at which time I took the opportunity to walk out of the barn about up to my ankles in mud. When I was a little distance from the barn, I heard them screeching and screaming in a very distressed manner, as it appeared they had engaged in a general fight with their knives. While they were thus engaged, the dream or vision ended. This dream was taken from a book, Teachings of the Prophet Joseph Smith, Section 6. The year was 1843 to 1847, or 18. 44, page 393. Does this dream describe the condition of the current Mormon church when Joseph Smith returns? A few days before he was murdered, 
The Nauvoo Legion pledged their loyalty to Joseph Smith after he addressed them. Afterwards, he told them, had they not done so, he would go west and raise up another people under the gospel, meaning the American Indians. Joseph Smith holds the keys in this life and the life to come. This is a talk from George Q. Cannon in the year 1869. The keys of this priesthood were bestowed never more to be taken from the earth. Hence, in the revelation I have read, provision was made by the Lord that Joseph, in case he should fall, should ordain another in his stead, and he should have authority only to lay hands on and set apart someone to act in his place, in case he should prove unworthy. Thus, even from the beginning, the Lord seems to have held constantly before him the possibility of his or any mortal man's falling away. He was a young man, and like every man, he was apt to get lifted up in the pride of his heart. Therefore, God reminded him that he only held the keys as long as he should be faithful to the truth. But in a subsequent revelation, the Lord informed him that he should hold the keys in this life and in the life to come, and they should never be taken from him. Hurry up the work, brethren, he used to say. Let us finish the temple. The Lord has a great endowment in store for you. And I am anxious that the brethren should have their endowments and receive the fullness of the priesthood. He urged the saints forward continually, preaching unto them the importance of completing that building, so that therein the ordinances of life and salvation might be administered to the whole people, but especially to the quorums of the holy priesthood. Then, said he, the kingdom will be established, and I do not care what shall become of me. These were his expressions oft repeated in the congregations of the saints, telling the brethren and sisters of the church and the world that he rolled the kingdom on to the twelve, and they would have to round up their shoulders and bear it off as he was going to rest for a while and many other expressions of a like nature, the full meaning of which the saints did not realize at the time. There's George Buchanan, an apostle of the LDS Church, also saying that Joseph Smith said he would go to rest and then return. Please like and subscribe to this video. Please support the products that help keep this channel possible. Please follow the links. Thank you.